All right, if you are a veteran in Logic Pro, you probably already know how to do this. Well, at least most of you guys should know how to do this. But if you are a newbie or just now getting into Logic Pro, I'm gonna show you guys how to import samples and how to time stretch the samples to fit to any beat and show you guys how to make a beat around it. So let's go ahead and get to it. Bolo! All right, before we get started with this tutorial, make sure you guys subscribe, make sure you guys comment, and please turn on those post notifications so you will know the next time I have another video available. And if you like this type of content, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. If you do not like this type of content, go ahead and hit that thumbs down. As you guys already know, I really don't care. All right, as most of you guys know, Logic is my dog choice. Even though I have not been making a lot of videos using Logic, but Logic is my dog of choice because it has made me all of my biggest hits. All of my biggest tracks were made on Logic. And I like to use Logic a lot of times now for importing loops and samples because it is so easy and you can do so many things with the sampler and Logic and you can do so many things with the time stretching and transposing in Logic. But today we're gonna focus on time stretching so you can go ahead and import your loops time stretch everything and make a quick beat without all the hassle. So let's go ahead and go into Logic right now and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Okay, so we have Logic Pro pulled up and I have a instance of Splice pulled up right now. And why do I have Splice pulled up? Because it is a dope subscription to where you can go ahead and use royalty free loops. Royalty free and it's very easy. It comes with a whole little desktop app too. So if you wanna go ahead and get it and get you even the cheapest plan or the more expensive plan, I have a very long link in the video description where you can go ahead and get you a Splice account. Click on that. It'll really help your life out. All right, so we have a loop that I like right here. Here it is. All right, sounds pretty decent. As you guys can see, the tempo in Logic is 120 BPM and the tempo in this is 150. What are we gonna do? Well, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this bad boy in here and we're gonna put on the track. Uh, I don't need all that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and time stretch this out. It's kinda like an old school method, but you know, it'll work out. So what we're gonna do is, as you guys can see, I got the tempo set at 120 BPM. Now, do I want this to fit 120 BPM? Maybe, maybe not, but let's see how it sounds. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hold Option, and I'm gonna hover it over till it looks like that. See that little thing right here? It looks like that. Once it looks like that, we can take hold and drag it right here for four bars, and let's see how it sounds. <laughs> It's a little fast, yeah. So now it seems like they have this in double time. So we're gonna go ahead and stretch this out to make this actually eight bars because it's in double time. Let's stretch that out. And then bam, let's see how it plays at 120 BPM. Real slow. Let's go ahead and change this to the original tempo of 150 BPM. So let's go ahead and change this to 150 BPM and guess what happens? It's out of whack again. What are we gonna do? Simple, just hold down option and wait for that to pull up and just stretch it right here and guess what happens? Very simple. Now, that's one way of doing it. But I'm gonna show you guys a little bit better way so that you don't have to keep having to time stretch and stuff like that manually. All right, so we're back in the splice. What we're gonna do is we're gonna re-put this sample back in, but we're gonna do a different method, and this is the method I like using. So let's go ahead and drag this back in here, right? And don't need all that. And right now I have it set at 150 BPM. And then there's ways you can actually find out the tempo of the sample and We'll get into that later on, but we already know it's 150 BPM. So what we can do now is we can go right here into our flex timing and we can go ahead and do that. And what I like to do is with the flex timing, sometimes I do automatic, but if I know I'm dealing with a lot of elements in that loop of that sample, I go ahead and do polyphonic. And guess what? Bam, we got that. And then we can stretch this out to make our eight bars. So when we play it, cool. 
So sounds good. But what if we want to change the tempo of that, but we don't want to change the pitch or anything. Since we have it already set with the flex timing, we can go ahead and change this to any tempo and guess what happens? It automatically sets and we can play this back. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do 170. So we can go all the way up to 170. As you guys can see, the computer's doing all that processing zeros and ones and all that good stuff. And guess what? We can play it back now and guess what it sounds like. And just like that, you are done. It's that simple. And even if you want to use like multiple samples and different keys, you can actually go in here now, since we have it on the flex time, we can actually transpose this if we want to. So if you want to transpose this, maybe down like minus five, guess what happens? All it does it. Or well, if we want to transpose this thing up, plus five, guess what happens? that easy this way of using the flex on here is much better than the other way because now we can just have it set and we can change the tempo and transpose it fine tune it do all that good stuff and you can even go ahead and quantize the sample too but that's for a later video so i like that right now so let's go ahead and add some drums to it let's go ahead and take this transpose down to the original right here yep yeah, let's take that right there <laughs> And we are in A minor right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some drums. Now, we got the sample in here. Everything sounds good. We wanna go in and add some drums. The only thing I do not like about Logic is when you're trying to add in drums from the actual program itself, you can't do 32-bit samples. And then it's still kind of like laggy when you try to add in samples. So a lot of my drum kits now, I make them 16-bit so they'll work directly in Logic. And that's the only thing I wish Come on, you guys, go ahead and make it to where we can go ahead and import 32-bit samples directly from inside the program. That'll be great. And be able to audition MIDI before we even drop it in. That'll be great. That'll be great, too. Other than that, this is still my program of choice. So let's go ahead and add a clap in here. So let's go to our claps. Okay. Let's see what we got. Let's try that one right there. And the good thing about it is we can just go ahead and drag it, drag it on in here, and then we can do it like that. And then it's already ready for us to go ahead and use on our keyboard. And let's go ahead and add this clap in real quick. All right, cool, so we got the clap in. That time I didn't have it on auto quantize. Let me go ahead and set that right now. Let's do this at a one eighth right now. So it already quantized it for us. So let's go ahead and play it. All right, cool. And for all you guys out there who are looking at my metering and saying, oh my God, you are peaking. The beat is just gonna sound terrible because you're peaking. Man, ain't nobody worried about that when we're making beats, man. Let's just make the beat and we'll worry about that stuff later on because I know it's gonna be somebody who's gonna complain about me peaking. I'm not worried about that right now. Let me just make the beat first. Let me mix it and we'll be fine after that. How about that? Let's go ahead and add some hi-hats real quick. All right, so let's go back in here and find us a nice closed hat. That sounds good. We'll just drag that bad boy in there. And the way I like doing my hats is I like to create a MIDI region. And then let's go ahead and stretch this out to right here. And then what I like doing from this point, let's close this up. Let's pull this up a little bit higher. I like to go ahead and use my brush tool. And I'm going to change this to a 1 8 note. Just take the brush tool, hold command, hit that right there. And then we're just gonna drag this over. And then the higher you go, the more the velocity hits. And we're just gonna slide this over right here. And we are done. So when we play the hi-hats. And then now if I wanna add some other little stuff right here, I can do the uh, triplets, like the 116 triplet. And I can just hold the brush tool right here. And I can just do something like this. And 
maybe something right here. <laughs> This is something real simple for the tutorial. So as you guys can see, we got the hi-hats and everything else in there. And we're going to go ahead and go out of that. And I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate that real quick. All right, so we got the hi-hat and we got the clap in there. Let's go ahead and add a bass. <laughs> there it is as you guys can see it is very easy to time stress and transpose and all that good stuff inside of logic pro it is very easy and i'm gonna go ahead and add a few elements to it i'm gonna go ahead and play the finished beat at the end of the video and uh hopefully you guys learn something from it and i hope you guys enjoyed it and click that splice link get some royalty free samples and like i always say peace out check out the beat